Hello, my name is Michael Caputo. I'm going to be presenting a pulmonary hypertension case study that I did myself and went back to the doctor's notes to talk about it. This patient was 71 years old with hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, and a recent cardio, oh, excuse me, myocardial infarction. In March 2020, he had presented with an acute chest discomfort in the setting of anterior ST elevation myocardial infarction. His course was complicated by shock requiring impella support, aspiration pneumonia, and severe kidney injury. He was treated with percutaneous revascularization. The patient was doing well until he developed chest pain that prompted an emergency, emergency department visit. In December, his EKG revealed recur the, the same recurrent ST elevation myocardial infarction. He was taken for an emergent emergency angiography with successful revascularization of thrombos of the thrombosed stent in his left anterior descending artery. The patient's course was also complicated by a COVID infection. The reason for his visit was to determine if an implantable cardioverter defibrillator would be useful to correct the lower ejection fraction, or necessary rather than useful. For the echo findings, we found that his EF was at 30% or less than 30%. He had left atrial enlargement 87.1% milliliters and ventri left ventricular enlargement of 197.2 milliliters. The left ventricle also presented with apical akinesis as well as hypokinetic distal lateral, mid to distal enteroseptum and the basal infero posterior segments. So a lot of his left side was pretty damaged due to that heart attack in the left anterior descending artery. He also presented with grade three left ventricular diastolic dysfunction. The right ventricle was in normal limits with slightly thickened walls. The right atrium was mildly enlarged with a volume of 70 milliliters. The size of the inferior vena cava was within normal limits and collapsed with inspiration. The patient presented with mild pulmonary regurgitation as well as mild to moderate tricuspid regurgitation. The estimated RV systolic press pressure is severely elevated at 84.1%. And that's important to me as, uh, as learning because when we were looking for the, the PA pressure, we weren't getting a solid, like large tricuspid regurgitation gradient. And that's because of the left-sided heart failure. The patient wasn't able to, or the heart wasn't pushing out that hard, but I guess some equation in the computer noted that. The treatment for the patient was uh, for his coronary artery disease, the patient agreed that an I ICD, the in implantable cardioverter defibrillator, would, you know, it's, he'd consider it. And the patient was agreeable with the to consult with the electrophysiology team. The patient will continue to take all of his prescribed medicines. I'm only saying that because I don't know how to pronounce half the words and I don't want to look too silly. Uh, hypertension, his systolic and diastolic blood pressure had improved and he's going to continue to take the prescribed medication for that and also a low sodium diet. He also had hyperlipidemia, the LDL and non-HDL was above the goal of less than 70 and less than 100 milligrams respectively on the recent blood work the patient will continue 
his medication at 80 milligrams per day as well as obtain a rapid lipid panel for pulmonary hypertension the sorry i gotta read this so the pulmonary hypertension was likely caused because of the left-sided heart failure and when we were looking at that we actually noticed that there was a small atrial septal defect the treatment that the doctor is going to be giving for this is to consider transesophageal echocardiogra echocardiography imaging and right heart catheterization if the symptoms progress so he's going to be monitored pretty closely for the next couple months or probably even for the rest of his life just to make sure things aren't getting worse and that icd should help because what this patient has is grade two pulmonary hypertension and grade two pulmonary hypertension is caused by left-sided heart failure this so it's kind of hard to talk about the group two because even the doctors and everybody don't really know exactly why pulmonary hypertension is caused by left-sided heart failure normally it's caused by increased pressures but when the left-sided heart failure you, you, you can't get that because it's not pumping properly but yeah this is my case study i don't i hope you liked it